I want to tell you a little about the Gavin McFadden Award. I dedicated this award to my friend Gavin, who was passionate about great journalism, being a power for good, to give a voice to whistleblowers, so the truth can be told, no matter how inconvenient that truth is. In highlighting great journalism, this award also aims to shine a light on the worst of journalism that which aids and abets lies, or which simply remains silent when it should speak out. This year's award is unique because it pays tribute to one of the greatest journalists and publishers in history, Julian Assange. This man has committed no crime. This man has committed no crime and his detention is a stain on the UK justice system. As a whistleblower, I know only too well that injustice, abuse and all the wrongs in this world can only prevail if silence prevails, if there is no one to be a witness and there is no one to publish the truth. This year's award also shines a light on silence the very opposite of the truly great journalism of Julian Assange. Perversely, the silence of the journalism that could save him by telling the truth. We live in a world where whistleblowers and journalists are hounded, vilified and punished, where telling the truth is treated as a crime. Whistleblowers give this award to Julian Assange Courage, paying tribute to courage. There are only four words that really matter in this tribute. Free Julian Assange now. Maggie? I'd like to now read the award citation. Compassion and Care, and the Whistler present the Gavin McFadden Award 2019, the only award given by whistleblowers to Julian Assange for extraordinary courage and self-sacrifice in the service of truth. When a great journalist or publisher can be forcibly taken by the state and held unlawfully in full view of the press and the only thing that makes the news is the state's propaganda, then we have never needed great journalism more. This year's award pays tribute to a truly great journalist and publisher, Julian Assange, but it also shines a light on all those who stood on the wrong side in the war on free speech. When abuse, murder, torture, corruption or injustice are committed, and no one is willing to bear witness or publish the truth, then we are all in deadly peril. Well done. We'll be here soon, seeing him walk free. And next week, we're petitioning Parliament directly, calling for that. So please watch out in Hansard and the Parliament channel because you can't censor the truth always. So can I ask Julian's father to accept the award?
because he's an asylee and he's been given asylum and the rights of asylum allow Jean to travel over the United Kingdom land to take up his asylum. Every one of these conventions has scrapped, disobeyed, more sordid treachery from the Crown Prosecuting Service. I finish uh, on a, a, a positive note. I believe that with your help, we will win this. I've no doubt we will win because the key cannot, uh, in my view, crush such an outstanding person and event as the WikiLeaks. Uh, just a few activists in Germany brought to us revelations unparalleled of despicable destruction of seven countries, the murder of millions, the displacement of millions, you can't, the destruction of Libya, you can't even go to the shop now. If you're a woman, you have to send a man to, you can't walk on the street. That's their contribution. Julian's contribution is of a very, very high moral standard. And thank you. Thank you very, very much for this amazing award ceremony. I would like to thank Eileen Chubb for choosing our rally to have the ceremony in front of Belmarsh Prison. Um, I would like to thank John Shifton for saying these powerful words. John Assange is a man of peace. Um, his work with WikiLeaks has been in the service of peace. And we're here today demanding for his release. Our, our rally continues. I will now ask several people to come and say a few words um, in honour of Julian Assange. And anyone else in the end who wishes to say a word, please come forward and um, use the microphone. And may I ask um, perhaps uh, Chris Williamson, who's on us today, the only member of Parliament. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Chris. Well, thank, thank you, you very Chris. much indeed. And uh, I've got to say, the honour is all mine, and I want to pay tribute to everybody who is involved in this campaign. This is a crucially important campaign because this is all about really defending freedom of speech. And we know that freedom of speech is under attack. And the greatest exponent, the greatest advocate for freedom of speech is Julian Assange, who's languishing in solitary confinement in Belmarsh prison. That is a stain on the British state. Britain used to pride itself on standing up for human rights. And here we have a situation where somebody who we should be venerating, who we should be celebrating, is being forced to endure solitary confinement, which is tantamount to torture. Torture taking place on British soil. This, this cannot be allowed to stand. And it's so important, therefore, that we stand in solidarity and demand Julian Assange's release and that we do not take no for an answer. And I said it's an incredible privilege to, to be here and it's a particular privilege to meet Julian's father. I can only imagine the, the strain and stress and trauma that he and his mother have been experiencing. So we have a moral duty, it seems to me, to fight on behalf of Julian Assange, whose only crime is to expose war crimes by the United States of America and the abuse of state power and the abuse of power across the peace, really. Why on earth anybody 
who performed such a crucially important international public service should be languishing in solitary confinement in a high security in Great Britain. It's an absolute travesty, a tragedy, and an outrage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. essential that we do whatever we can. I've written to the Home Secretary demanding really that uh, really Britain honours its obligations and, uh, and as John is saying really he releases uh, Julian Assange forthwith. It was bad enough wasn't it that he was incarcerated in the first place for the relatively uh, modest crime of the body like that, misdemeanour of skipping bail but we know the reason why he did that but to now be told that the end of his sentence is going to remain in prison, we're behaving as some sort of tin pot dictatorship. That's why we absolutely have to uh, stand up and fight this together. And so I want all of us today to take this message forward and to bring more pressure on other parliamentarians. I know that the uh, Shadow Home Secretary and indeed the Leader of the Opposition, Jeremy Corbyn and uh, Diane Abbott, have, have made their support for Julian very clear when he was dragged from the Ecuadorian embassy. But I want to see this issue being raised more regularly on the floor of the House of Commons. I want to see the government being yes. yes. the pressure. And where are the British journalists? Where is the free press in this country? Why aren't they defending one of their own? That's a very, very serious question. So look, there is a possibility, I know we're getting to discussing Brexit today, but there is a possibility that we might have an interim government and we might have Jeremy Corbyn Woo! going across the of Ken Downing Street ahead of a general election and hopefully he'll get uh, over the uh, threshold of 10 Downing Street uh, for a more permanent tenure. But one of their most important duties, I think, would fall on Jeremy's shoulders should that eventuality arise where in order to remove Boris Johnson to try to sort out the Brexit debacle, he shouldn't forget Julian Assange. And we should use that opportunity and we should bring pressure to bear if there is a change in government to say, do the right thing and free Julian Assange.